All right, so in order to make a shape like this, you need to use a sub D workflow, and I'm gonna show you why, all right? So let me just start a new scene here, and I'm going to add in a cylinder. Now, if we were to do this with the traditional you know, workflow where we start with high poly, use Booleans, all that type of thing, let me show you what's gonna happen. If I set this to 64 or something high like that, and then we just go into the side view, and maybe I will select this area and then extrude this over and then just scale that a bit and then maybe i'll take this area here and kind of move that down and then this area right here and kind of move that up and then we'll just go ahead and bevel it and not sure what uh i think i selected the wrong area let me just get this selected correctly now what's going to happen when i bevel this right, is we're gonna have the exact shape that we're going for in this case, but if I shade auto smooth, you can start to see the problems that actually occur here. So first of all, it's kind of bent straight down from this portion, and you can kind of see this is causing a little bit of a shading distortion right here. Not to mention, if I want to bevel, for example, this area, you can already see it's gonna create this really weird uh, you know, set a topology up here, which is just not going to look good in terms of shading. So although you could do this, you know, if you're purely going for a render and you don't really care about the shading or topology whatsoever, you could just do this workflow and it would be fine. But there's a much more uh, effective solution that's going to completely remove this type of issue. And this is where we can actually use sub D and then go into our normal workflow. So instead of doing it this way, what I would actually recommend is you take a cylinder, go to something super low, because with sub D you wanna have a low poly count, and then we could just go here, do the same exact thing we did before. We'll just extrude this out, we'll scale that, and then I'll just take these edges here and just kind of move that down, and then I'll take these edges here, just move that up a bit. And then we'll go ahead and we will bevel this, but this time we'll just use like two segments. And then we'll go ahead and clean that up. And then at this point, I can just go in, I can join that there, join that right there, add in some loops to make this more even, kind of like that. And then all I really need to do here is go to the top, press F3 and search for grid fill, get some clean topology there on the top. And then we'll just go ahead and add in a loop straight through here. Actually, we'll run a symmetry and then add a loop straight through here, turn this area into a quad, and then just do some symmetries across each side. And um, let me undo that real quick. You have to be careful when you're doing the symmetry because it might remove the center, so be careful with that. I'm using Mesh Machine for the symmetry feature, by the way. Then we'll just go in here, we'll join this up, We'll join this up as well, and then just symmetrize over to that side. And now we have this type of shape, very similar, but low poly and full of quads. So now the nice part about this is if I want to round out this area like before, I'm not going to actually use a bevel modifier. I'm going to let the sub D do that for me. Now if I go in and press control 1 or control 2, control 3, and add that sub D, it starts rounding out that area, but it completely rounds out all the upper portions. Now, if I'm doing a hard surface model, obviously I want to have hard edges, right? So before we do that, um, you can do it after as well, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go up here to select and then select sharp edges. And then we're just going to deselect these areas here. And I'm gonna actually uh, show you what's gonna happen. So if we go ahead and just deselect some of these areas we don't actually want selected here, just the hard edges on the side, now what I can do is I can press Shift E, move my mouse to the right and set the edge crease to one. And now when I run a sub D, it's gonna hold those upper edges there, but it's gonna round out this portion right here. Now you wanna make sure your crease is not there or that's gonna happen. So make sure you do not have a crease on those edges right there. And just like that, you can see if I just shade auto smooth, we're gonna have a completely hard edge here on the top and on the bottom, 
but we're going to have that rounded effect without having that shading distortion that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And you can see the reason for that is that we're using, you know, uh, clean topology on that area, right? So now we have this shape. We have no shading errors. We have nothing like that. So at this point, I can just go in, I can apply the sub D. So what the sub D has done here is it's given me the shape I wanted without the shading distortions. And then from here, I can actually go in and start doing my normal workflow. So I could go in, I could add in a cylinder. I could even, you know, put this up to a higher resolution. You can still do this with a sub D if you want to have like perfectly clean topology. It just depends what you're going for, right? So, you know, I could go in here, I could add my Boolean, add some uh, interesting effects here on the inside. Just coming up with random ideas, by the way. I'll just go in, you know, bevel this area and this area as well. Then you can kind of create a shape like that. And then I could even go in and I could add in a reverse bevel. So Alt N to flip the face and then just bevel that. Uh, in the inverse direction. You can see I have the shape that I wanted, but I also have very clean shading. And then from here on out, you can use your normal workflow. You know, you can use Booleans, uh, whatever you're trying to do. So we'll just go in and maybe I'll just add in a cut here. I'm not going to worry about that side too much because I can just run a mirror modifier. And then we'll just go to about here. I can just cut through and then just mirror that to the other side and just kind of adjust the positioning a little bit so it looks good and then take this face we could flatten that and then maybe add in a bevel here add in a bevel here and then just add in some bevels over here as well kind of depends on the shape you want and then just like that you kind of have you know the shape that we started with at the beginning of the video with very very clean shading so this is a good example of where you do need to use sub D, even if you want to do your normal hard surface modeling workflow. And the simple reason for that is this area is bending down and we can't really do that effectively using just basic, you know, bevels like I showed you at the beginning of the video. So what you can actually do is you can combine a sub D workflow with your normal Boolean workflow and still have very very clean results just like you see right here now guys if you need any sort of help with hard surface modeling whether that's your portfolio modeling maybe you need to ask us questions because you're running into problems maybe you want our one-on-one -on -one help or you want help with your projects whatever the case may be go to the link in the top of the description you can book a free call with us we can see if we're able to help you where your problems are in blender and if we're able to help you we'll discuss some of those options as well including private coaching do-it-yourself training programs one-on-one uh, -on -one support stuff like that so if you need any sort of help with blender or any sort of help with hard surface modeling stuff book a call with us in the link in the top of the description we'll see if we can help you it's a free call and if we're able to help you we'll show you exactly how so thanks for watching hope the video is useful and i'll see you in the next one